Hey everybody, my name is Dowden, and in this video, we're going to be learning how to make music like Stan Kolev and Matt and Caspi. These two artists collaborate a lot of the time on music, so I wanted to do a video of both their styles combined. Stan and Matten are some of the highest selling progressive house artists. Their specific style of progressive house with a little bit of a tech house aspect makes their tracks super groovy, super clean, and very driving and exciting. For this style of progressive house, we have very powerful driving low end, and it sounds like this. Clean sounding drums with a little bit of tech influence that sound like this. And catchy melodies with some dark undertones that sound like this. So before we jump in, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get more videos like this one. And if you want access to the project files with the presets, the samples, and audio bounces of some of the synths, then make sure to click the link in the description below or the card up here in the corner. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna get started with the kick drum first. And the kick drum is very clean. Carries a, quite a bit of sub frequency. With Matten and Stan's tracks, sometimes they have a lot of open-ended kick and bass sections. So their kick is always very clean and their basses are always very uh, warm and full and usually a little louder than some of the comparable tracks because they really, really focus on their low end being super powerful. So that's what we're gonna try and do in this video as well. So the kick, very nice and clean, got the sub frequencies that we need and uh, let's move on to the bass. Super, super quick. The bass is going to be three different layers. The first layer is going to be the sub. The second is going to be a higher layer so that we can punch through the mix and have a bit of rhythm. The third layer is going to be this groovy accented bass top that's going to kind of groove along with the bass and kind of make room in the top of the bass for that groovy bass. So let's look at the MIDI here, just 16th notes across the board. And I'm gonna grab a wavetable and throw that into the bass. But first, we can take a listen to that. Okay, just sub frequencies right now. But what I'm going to do is actually turn this into a sawtooth wave. And we're going to throw an EQ on just to really see what's actually happening as well as hearing it. Bring that filter down. So that's 24. Make sure I don't have any of those low, low frequencies. Go around. Last octave here of D sharp is the key that we're in. So uh, the last octave that I want to focus on is this 38 hertz. So anything below around 38 hertz, I'm going to cut out because I don't really need that. I'm going to push the sustain up just a little bit. I'm not going to bring it all the way up because this is giving us a little bit of a punch because it's just dropping down. Maybe I'll go negative 1.5. The envelope is allowing for the bass to get to full volume and then just drop down 1.5 decibels. So it's giving it just a little bit of a punchiness. Then go to envelope two and push the sustain uh, down to about 20% and then throw on to uh, the frequency one. Envelope two, about maybe 10. We're just opening up that filter very, very quickly and just allowing for a little bit to get through. It's punchier than just uh, a sine wave. We're getting those harmonics as well. You can see and you can hear. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the sub right now. What I'm gonna do is duplicate this uh, inside of the channel. So I'm going to group this, turn this into an instrument rack, open up the chains and duplicate. And I'm gonna name this one sub. And this one I'm going to name mid and high. Okay. So I'm going to slow the mid and high, I'm going to grab an EQ, throw that in the channel, and right away I'm going to take out that low information. We don't need that, we already have our sub. And I'm going to grab a multiband dynamics and split up the frequencies a little bit and then sidechain them differently. So multiband dynamics, I'll throw that on the mid and high, and I will solo the mid section. And I'm going to push this open all the way up to 15 kilohertz. And then the low, I'm going to bring to around maybe 200 to 300. And when I solo the mid frequencies now, we're not getting that low anymore. We're only getting from 280 or 260 to 15 kilohertz. If I bring this down, we'll start to get the subs again. And EQ off. We don't need that. So let's bring that up to around 260. We're just dealing with the mids. 
And let's turn that up a little bit because it is a little quiet. Really push that up. Then we'll go into the sub frequencies and we'll do the same thing, but the opposite. So I'll grab the multiband dynamics and I'm just going to drag that into the sub frequencies and copy it over by holding control or command. That's going to duplicate it into the sub channel. And I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to have this low actually go down to 30 hertz and the high, I'm going to stop it at 300. And now when I solo the mid, we're only getting the low end of the sound. Okay, let's actually add a second layer here. I'm going to turn this into a sine wave, bring this down one full octave. And now we will have the sub frequencies. Maybe bring this back just a little bit. Sub frequencies, and then we have these other bass frequencies as well. So we have a really nice full sounding sub. And then we also have this high end. I want to give some movement to this high end. So I'm going to put an LFO onto the matrix for the filter one frequency. So just a little bit. And then I'm going to turn the retrigger off and the speed and the amount down. Maybe a little bit less. We have just a little bit of movement now. Okay, great. And now I'm going to sidechain compress that bass to the kick. If I look at the MIDI here, I have bass hitting on every single one of these notes, and this could cause the bass frequencies to overlap quite a bit. I'm really going to squish this down with some compression, uh, the sidechain compression. I'm going to throw a little bit on the entire channel and then a lot on the sub frequency. The sub frequency is here. I'm going to put sidechain from kick. Attack down a little bit and just solo that. And we're going to be side chaining quite a lot, and that's going to add to the groove as well. That looks pretty good to me. We're making a lot of room for that kick, but it is adding to the groove. Turn the kick down a few more dB and the bass up a few dB. Great, and then uh, let's actually back off just a tiny, tiny bit on here. And I'm going to add some compression as well onto the entire channel to make room for both instruments uh, of bass. Just a slight, slight compression on this one. So now we're compressing the sub, and then we're also compressing both of them together. And one last thing I will do is just compress the actual bass together. So I'll just a very quick attack and release. There we go. And let's turn this back down because now it's a little loud. Great. So let's move on to the next part of the bass. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to this bass top with the MIDI looks like this. It's more of a syncopated rhythm, and I'm going to grab the mid and high wavetable here and just copy that into the new channel. Bass top, and it sounds like this. I don't want that low end, so I'm going to grab an EQ and cut that out. I push the high end up a little bit. Okay, great. So for this one, I want to give it a bit of movement as well. So I'm going to put an LFO onto the cutoff. Maybe a little bit more. Open the filter a little bit more. And I'll turn the volume up on this a little bit. And I'm going to throw something called tremolo on there. It's going to give it a bit of a wafty back and forth sound. Very subtle. Just a little bit to give it some, some movement. And then I'm going to throw a delay and a reverb on there. But I want to make sure that I'm only getting the top end. 
and I want to change this from a three to a five so that we're getting two different delays here and a little bit of reverb. And I want to put a low cut on that reverb so I'm not getting any of that low signal. Great. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do, like I said before, is kind of make room for this bass pluck in the top of this bass here. So I'm going to go back to the mid and high, and I'm going to duplicate this compressor over, and I'm going to choose, instead of the kick, I'm going to choose the bass top. And just a little bit of side chain compression. We're not going to pull it out too, too much. And let's take a listen to all three, the kick and the bass with the bass top. actually going to turn down this mid bass a little bit so it's not so prominent. And now we're starting to get this nice deep dark groove with our bass line and our kick. Okay, so let's move on to the drums. And this is where a lot of the signature style of Stan Kolev and Martin Caspi come into play. So a lot of the time- Oh my god, that scared the shit out of me. A lot of the time, the drums, even though they are both very progressive house influenced artists, their drums sometimes come from a more techie perspective. So I'm going to show you how to make these drums more suited for their style and especially with the hi-hats themselves. So let's go ahead and grab the claps first, draw a mini clip here, and I have two layers of claps, nice high end clap, and then I have this snare. That's more of the punchiness that I want from that clap sound. But the clap is pretty big because there is going to be a lot of open space kind of in that area. So I'm going to grab my two claps and I'm going to draw in the MIDI for them. The snare I'm going to put on the downbeats. Duplicate that over. For the clap I'm going to go a little bit more loose. I'm going to draw them in. But then I'm going to zoom in and actually move these over slightly. Each one will be a little bit different. This one will keep actually on beat. And this last one, I'll move over slightly as well. It's just going to give it more of a groove and a swing and a loose feel. Maybe turn that snare down just a little bit. We don't want too much low end coming through. And then I'm going to EQ out some of that low end. And last, I'll add a saturator. I don't really need to compress these together because the saturator kind of works as a compressor in that sense where it is kind of gluing them together, giving it a bit of that bite. Maybe I'll put some has effect on the top flap. Just a little bit of stereo width as well for that clap. And then we move on to the hats. So this is where you're going to get the really, really strong aspect of the tech house vibe. That I was referring to. So I have two hats. I'm gonna draw a MIDI clip there. Two hats. The first hat is more white, noisy, softer, more wide. And the second hat is more punchy and high. So what I'm gonna do is actually draw in these hats just like you normally would 16th notes. Of course, we can add a bit of swing to some of them, slightly move them over. And then I'm going to just grab all of them and shrink them down just in size a little bit so that they don't overlap. And then I'm going to grab uh, another hat here. Duplicate that over. So this one again, this one's going to be on beat, but the other ones are going to be a little bit more swingy. And uh, maybe I can move a little bit of these. And then what I'm going to do to make this really tacky is add this accent before and after. So let me just grab this hat. It's going to duplicate it over here. And now you can see why I made it shorter so it doesn't overlap like this. And this is going to be reduced in velocity quite a bit. And I'm going to put one on the end after as well. And I can just copy these over. Do that a couple times. And this is where we're going to get that nice swing from the, the hats. Okay, this one's just a little bit loud. I'm going to reduce that volume a little bit. And this is just a little bit too long, so I'm going to shorten that one up. So you get that bit of a chop. There's an empty space in between the hats there, and that gives it a bit of more of a, like a, a pounding groove rather than a rolling groove that a lot of progressive house has. 
And this will fill up a little bit of that rolling that the progressive we were talking about. Let's draw in our MIDI clip here and 16th notes. And then of course, super simple, just draw in like this. But instead of moving these down all the way, I'm just going to move them down a little bit, draw out another four and maybe play around with the velocity a little bit, duplicate that over. And then I'm going to use side chain compression for this. Bring that over here. So I'm going to actually use a compressor, throw that on the shakers, and this is going to give us a really nice groove. So compressor, side chain from, and we'll put it to the kick. Release down, attack down. Nice, it's giving us that groove right away. I want to fade in this a little bit. I don't like how hard it's hitting. So I'm just going to fade in just a little bit here. Make it sound more like a shaker. And then I'm going to add some stereo width by using the has effect, which is just a stereo delay with these settings. 100% dry wet, zero feedback, and like this. Let's listen to the kick and the drums together. Next, I just have these two toms and this tom loop that I've made. So this tom here. You want to make sure that when you're using toms and percussive elements that hold a pitch like this, that you're tuning them. So if I open up an EQ, I know that I'm in D sharp. So I want to make sure that my tom is in key. And there's a G sharp here. So G sharp is in key with the track. To get there, I had to push this up eight semitones and actually had to push up the detune a little bit as well. Let's listen before. So I could have pushed it up just the bit to get the D sharp. I liked the way that the G sharp sounded. So let's go back to that eight semitones and a little bit extra. And then I just wanted to add a little bit of rhythm. So with Stan and Matten's tracks, they don't have too many percussive elements going on all at once. Uh, usually they rely on using more of the synth elements to really carry the excitement of the track, where their drums are groovy, but they're not that full. They're a little bit more simplistic in a sense that there's not too much going on. So just adding one or two of these to really carry that hook is usually better for this style than to add a ton of percussive elements like in other styles. We can listen with the kick drum. And then the second tom here is more of this like weird snary type tom that uh, a lot of the Stan Cullivan and Mountain Caspi tracks have. So let's actually just EQ out a little bit of this low end of that tom. And let's go into that second tom. So I'm going to take a listen to this. So it's like very distorted. It's very uh, high end, I guess. But I don't need that low end. There's a lot of low end there. And I'm going to throw a reverb on there as well. And just a little bit of dry wet. So that's pretty cool. You just want to give uh, just a little bit of rhythmic hook to it. You want a little hook that is going to be interesting and uh, not just throwing percussion in all willy nilly, but actually thinking it through and seeing what will help the loop sound more interesting. And I'm having a hard time hearing these two toms, so I'm going to turn the drums up and maybe the kick and bass down one dB each. And then maybe the hats and the clap down one dB each and the shakers one. And then I can turn this up a little bit more. With these toms, it's very percussive. So I'm going to make sure that I have a compressor on there with no attack and just really squash down that transient. There we go. Good. Last, I had this tom loop. So this tom loop is just something I made and froze down. I'm actually going to filter out a little bit of the high end as well. I want this to be very, very much a textural sounding loop, just something to have in the back. Adding 
some variation and uh, giving a little bit more swing to that. Of course, all these samples and the loops will be in the uh, project file. So make sure if you want to grab those to go ahead and download those in the description below. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the melodies. And the first melody that I have is in D sharp and it's just this pluck lead. And what I'm gonna do is actually just grab the bass top and duplicate everything in this channel over. So the wavetable, the EQ, all the way to the reverb and drop that into the melody. And we can take a listen right away. Okay, and I'm gonna open up the cutoff just a little bit more inside of my envelope too with the matrix amount. So it's just a little bit pluckier and turn up the reverb just a little bit as well. Next, I'm going to do this, saw, uh, this sound that I called boop. It's just an FM synth, so I'm using operator and throwing that on there and very, very simple. Just turning up the volume of the first level and a little bit of the second level. We're going to get a bit of a frequency modulated sound. But I'm going to take the sustain down on this one here and EQ out the low end. Turn the volume down a little bit. And put a reverb on there. And this is just going to give a little bit of an accent to the loop. Nothing too crazy, but uh, let's just take a listen with that rest of the instruments. Maybe cut out a little bit more of that low end. Just a, a little bit of an accent there. And now we're going to move on to this big FM pluck. I'm going to grab this and bring it over. And we're going to use another operator, another FM synth. And I'm going to pull this up again, pull this down, decay pretty quick. And then the course I'm going to bring up to three and the other course on the second layer, uh, the second operator um, is going to be four. Oh yeah, listen, so before and with the FM. Nice. I'm going to use an EQ, get rid of that low end. We don't need that. And reverb again. I want to make sure I'm using the low cut so I don't get any stereo sound on the low end. Very, very Stan Kolev. Maybe a little bit more release on this sound as well. So we're really building the loop now. We have a lot going on. We have the melody. We have this little accent. We have this big FM pluck that's going to be playing every once in a while. Uh, and let's move on to this growl sound that I have. So. This sound is really, really cool and it's gonna be recognizable right away. I have a few variations of it and to make this sound, I used this patch here. I grab a wavetable. Sawtooth and I'm going to put envelope two up on the filter. The filter down, 24. Filter up here quite a bit. And we're going to change filter two so that it has a pretty long attack, uh, slow attack. And long release. Long release on the amp. And then I grabbed this Camel Crusher, which is a, it's a free plugin. The compressor on and distortion way up. With some EQ. And reverb. But I'm not going to use the low ones for this. I already exported these ones and made some variations of it. So they sound pretty cool. I'm going to keep this growl for this, though. This little accent that I have. Maybe roll off a little bit of the high end. And more reverb. We're getting through these pretty quickly and we will move on to the arrangement soon and then we will see what we're doing with all these different sounds. I have three sounds left. I have a vocal, a pad, and this flute sound. So we'll go to the flute first. It is complete control using a preset that they have here. And this is what it sounds like. 
And I just put a big reverb on there, 100% dry wet. So this is just a preset in complete control and then a huge reverb on there. So if you don't have complete control or the reverb, don't worry, this sample will be bounced out to audio in the track, in the project files. A lot of Stan at Matin's tracks have this organic style to them because they use samples of real instruments. So I wanted to do that in this track as well. To create this pad, I actually took this flute and I froze the reverb. So it played, reverb, play. I hit freeze, and then I recorded it using resampling. And then I unfroze and down pitched it. And then I created this. A pretty good way to make pads is by resampling reverbs, and I do have a video of that. I'll put that in the corner of the video as well, so you can check that out after. Last, what I did for this is just throw a, through a chorus on the pad as well to give it a bit of life and movement. It might not sound like much now because we're not really building the track out and we're just kind of building all the elements as we go. Let's just take a listen to what we kind of have so far in this little bit. And it might start to sound more like a Stan Kolev and Matt and Caspi track. Last, we have this vocal. So this is just a vocal sample of me that I recorded and it sounds like this without any processing on it. Obviously, it doesn't sound great, but we're going to work our producer magic and throw a Valhalla Shimmer on there. If you don't have Valhalla Shimmer, it is such a great tool. I throw the mix up quite a bit and the feedback up quite a bit. Maybe some low cut, high cut up as well. Here we go. I love this plugin. Then I have this, which I just took off the front of this sample that I've faded out and put it up five semitones. And I'll just grab that same reverb and duplicate it on there. These will be bounced out as well in the project files. Last, we have our effects. I just have these impacts that I created by using another Valhalla plugin, which is super massive. So I took a snare and I put super massive on there and just made this. And then I bounced out that audio and created these effects here. Then we have these bongo hits as well with just a bunch of reverb on them. And they sound like this. Let's get into the arrangement. I'm gonna do a quick arrangement now and really give this song the life that it deserves. So let's go with the kick and the bass at the beginning, just the bass top. I'm going to bring in some of the drums as well. So let's listen to those, just the, the toms and the tom loop. And we'll have the pad as well. We'll turn that down a bit. It's over. Okay, so I'm gonna move this clap over and we're gonna bring in the drums here. Here, I'm going to put this growl and this boop effect here. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this all over. Bring in the clap here. Okay, I'm just gonna duplicate these kicks over another time so it fills up there. I'll grab another growl. 30 second mark. That's where the clap can come in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is actually build up these pads here 
Uh, I have the vocal coming in right at the one minute mark. I'm going to have the kick and the bass, everything come in, but it's going to be very open-ended. I'm going to get rid of everything except for a few elements, and it's going to be very powerful. So let me move this over here. Uh, move this over here somewhere. We have a couple growls. A minute. Uh, let's put another growl at the minute mark. And let's build up this melody. So I'm going to turn the melody on, and I'm going to automate the cutoff filter. So right-click, automation. And right before it drops, we'll turn it back down. Okay, and that's good, that's good. Let's put the kick over here. The drums are gonna come back full force right here. Uh, at about 15 seconds in. Let's cut out another one of these kicks, all four of these. Great. I'm teasing you with that drop. I know what it's going to sound like, and it's going to sound really good. So I'm going to hold on to that until I get to show you. Uh, let's turn this effect up. We have the effects here. Sounding good. We have another impact here, which is good. That's where I want it. So I think we're pretty much ready. Maybe the FM plucks. I'm going to bring in right at the drop. And then let's put those on everyone like this. Let's duplicate that over. Maybe I'll move this over a little bit. Like that. That way they're not hitting the same as the FM pluck here. And then I'll move this melody over a little bit as well. Same kind of deal with the cutoff. Uh, let's go, let's put this grill here. Let's get rid of this one. And I'll have the flute play in as this kind of drops back in. Okay, I'm gonna clap down a little bit. Let's push this over a few more here. Make sure that we are going right to the end. Bass line goes all the way to the end. That's good. Vocal down a little bit in volume. And let's just put a little bit of glue compression on the entire drum bus here. Okay, so we're ready to take a listen to our final version of this track.
All right, everybody, if you learned something, make sure to give a like and subscribe to the channel so you get more videos like this one. And if you want the Ableton project files, click on the link in the description below. You'll grab the samples, presets, bounced out versions of some of the audio, and leave a comment below to let me know which artists you'd like me to cover in my next how to make music like videos.